Hey everybody, you're watching ND TV. I'm your host, Michael Martin. In this episode, we're taking a look at adventure skiing in Austria, Italy, and Bend, Oregon. Oh, we got some mountains coming into view over there. like some nice uh, Garmisch area, mountain something in Germany, about 30 minutes outside of Munich. Having just arrived in Europe the day prior, our friend Flo had hooked us up with Guide and Rico, hailing from Alta Badia in the Dolomites. Italy, which is more commonly known for sun than snow, had been getting hammered on, and Enrico told us today would be a special day. The Dolomites Super Ski links 485 lifts to one ski pass which was especially helpful today, as we would be starting in the village of Araba and coming down in Alta Padilla and returning home all within six hours. Loading onto the mind-blowing Sas Pordoi tram, we were awestruck by the Dolomites. Rising 800 meters out of the valley, the Pordoi completes the lap in a few short minutes with no towers and no hint of safety. The day started in typical European fashion, with a rush to the lift followed by a big hike, but first, a cappuccino. Our first ascent from the top was fairly straightforward, with a bit of wind buff chalk snow. But just as we were heading up the next climb, Enrico set off a massive slab avalanche on a short hillside. Nobody was hurt, but it ended up being a cautionary sign of the power of the Dolomites. As we rounded the next hill, Enrico unveiled his master plan, a classic Dolomite couloir, steep, long, and spectacular. On the last hike of the day, we peered out into the vast expanse of the range. With a limitless number of couloirs left to be skied, we made plans to ski the next day. With no notice, a massive storm rolled in and snuffed out any plans to ski in the Alpine. We would be left wanting as it was time to pack it up and head north. We'll be right back.
Dear adventurer, we know you. You're one of us. When you hear the word vacation, you don't think of watery beers on lazy beaches. You envision sweet summits and hard-earned high fives. Sweeping vistas granted only to those who work for them. You don't want to bark a lounger, and you don't want a lime in your beer. You belong in Bend, Oregon. Love your life a little more at visitbend.com. Following a week at ISPO, we headed west to St. Anton. The snow had been stacking up all week, and we wanted a taste of Tyrol. The interesting thing about skiing St. Anton was the entrances. With no regulations on where you could ski off the lift, the ski patrol had set up elaborate fencing to block off the more interesting runs. Not to be deprived, we sketched our way into the steep and deep. At the end of the day, we were surprised by a Russian on vacation who was apparently following us around all day. Hey. How's it right? Uh, good, you? Good. Oh, very nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah good as it gets. Yeah. You see, I was that head in that I was the very last one. Ah, nice. This, this lift. Yeah, and yeah. I, and now I'm, I, I'm pretty sure that no one on the No, no. We're the last. Together we watched the sun set on a perfect day, and unlike Italy, we would not be deprived of another sunny pow day.
And with that, our European dream was over. It was time to head back. When we started this project, we were faced with the challenge of making skis that are lighter and more versatile while at the same time making them more powerful and more stable. The more we reduce the ski's physical weight, the harder it is to increase the power all while maintaining stability. But we knew if we could overcome these challenges, we could build skis without compromise. The Energy Ski Line is the next generation of all mountain skis. We've created a new shape that allows us to build a ski that excels in every condition. Our goal is to build a lighter and stronger ski, and the new torsion bridge technology unlocked the key to achieving that goal. The Energy Ski Line has broken the barrier for all mountain. No matter what the conditions or the terrain, the Energy Line is all there. It's the true feeling of freedom on snow. A photo arrived from a friend. All it said was, do you want to be the first? With that, I booked a ticket and headed to Bend, Oregon. Just a short drive found us in the middle of nowhere. Special permits and access needed to be granted for this expedition during the winter. A summer road exists for bird watchers and cell towers, but from October till June, it's dormant. And that is why we were here. Following a long schlog up a mix of dirt and snow, we found ourselves deep in the range. With no working knowledge of the area, we would feel our way through the mountains.
Given a short window needed to complete my journey and only one working sled left, I ventured out ahead to scout the line and send back directions. Going into an unknown area on your own has its rewards and frightening challenges. Things move slower in real time, but much faster in your head. You have to remind yourself that one mistake here could be quite costly. As I peered into my first line, which I named PJ's for its casual appearance, a warm spring wind hit me and I felt an urgency to keep moving in order to get the line in good conditions. Rounding the last curves of the mountain, the magnitude of the situation hit me. It was startling and exciting all in the same. With a big grin, I dropped in. Reaching the bottom, I felt a huge sense of relief, knowing that all the effort to get here was worth the trip, and I quickly set out to get back up the couloir and relay the information. As I made my way back up, I passed a giant spring waterfall that had formed in the couloir, and heard crackles over the radio that my ski partners were just behind on the top of PJs. Lucas, Pete, this is for you too. Doug, standing up there, and my mom, and everybody else too. I love skiing.
sun set on another great adventure. I couldn't wait for my next trip to Central Oregon. That's our show. We'll see you next time. Thank you.